Hello, and welcome to another episode of Healthy Perspectives. My name is Vernon Solomon. Acid reflux is a common condition that occurs when the acid contents of the stomach flow back into the esophagus, causing symptoms such as heartburn, regurgitation, and difficulty swallowing. While occasional acid reflux is normal, frequent or severe acid reflux can indicate a more serious condition, and if left untreated, could lead to further complications. In this episode, we will explore the causes, some general symptoms of the condition, as well as various treatment options available. We'll discuss with Dr. Camario De Castro best practices for managing acid reflux as well. Dr. De Castro, thank you so very much for joining us again here on Healthy Perspectives. A topic that we realize that we've never discussed on the program before, but does seem to be one that's popular anywhere we go on the planet, and that's acid reflux. I know it's, it's not necessarily a fancy, you know, we talk about the hypertensions and diabetes and the like, but acid reflux is something that significantly impacts the lives of people. But what I'd like to start the program off with is by you defining for us, what is acid reflux? Okay, well, thank you for having me here. So acid reflux really is not a disease, rather it's a manifestation of other diseases, and it's also a constellation of symptoms, really, that are manifestations of underlying problems. So a patient complaining of acid reflux can say they have heartburn, they feel burning in the stomach or behind the breastbone in the middle of the chest, or they have burning in the throat, some persons complain of having a bitter or sour taste in the throat or mouth as well. Some patients also have pain. What type of pain? So they complain of pain in the stomach or as well behind the chest along with the burning. So when we speak of acid reflux though, you, you mentioned the symptoms, but then how does that coalesce or come together with things such as the indigestion that persons may is that considered a symptom or is that another definition, if you would, of acid reflux? Yes, so acid reflux can be related to indigestion and it can be a symptom or manifestation of indigestion. Persons with indigestion may go a step further and tell you that they feel like food is coming back up in the chest or they have um, a lot of bloating or they feel as if their food is taking long to digest. You know, so indigestion is a step further um, beyond acid reflux. So you mentioned a few symptoms. Let's go a little further with that. What are some additional symptoms that persons may be confronted with? All right, yes. So patients do complain of nausea. They feel like vomiting. Some persons actually have vomiting. Some persons induce vomiting because they feel as if once that food is out of the stomach, that acidic content, it makes them feel better. Um, some persons eat less because they're afraid to eat if they have acid reflux symptoms and they start losing weight because of that. And in more sinister cases, you know, a patient can have a serious underlying problem that can lead to the weight loss. But acid reflux was only a manifestation of it. So now I'd, I'd like to go a little bit deeper on the, because you seem to be alluding to more lifestyle related uh, effects. But before we go there, what are some of the causes, though, that you as a physician see for acid reflux? Yes. So a big, um, a big pillar of that a contributor would be that the lifestyle of the patient. So what they choose to eat, at what time they choose to eat. And we know our diet these days, a lot of fast food is involved. So persons who consume fatty foods or fried foods, a lot of soda, um, or any other carbonated beverage, by the way, um, persons who consume caffeine, you know, coffee and, uh, and other caffeinated beverages, they tend to have an increased um, risk of having acid reflux symptoms. And then additionally, with lifestyle, if you eat late at night, it tends to cause you to have acid reflux because you're going to eat late and you go to bed soon after. That food really doesn't get to digest and pass from the stomach into the intestines. And when you lie down, all of that acid content can come back up just because of gravity. It's a normal effect. And of course, you have an increased chance of developing acid reflux symptoms from that. And the last thing, I'm sorry, those persons who smoke as well, 
Mm -hmm. Smoking does increase the risk of acid reflux symptoms and drinking alcohol as well. So all of these are lifestyle um, related. Which leads to the question as a, a practicing physician and you see how many patients roughly that may have this condition, if you would, on a regular basis? I would say about 50% of patients. So if so many people in our society are dealing with it, how are you encouraging? What are we doing to help people understand that these changes need to be made in their lifestyle? Right. So usually at, at every physician visit, we do some sort of counseling or offering advice to our patients. So once there's a key problem, because of course we know a patient may have multiple problems at one visit, but which problem is bothering you, you the most? And if it is acid reflux, we definitely offer counseling. And in um, most cases, I do advise my patients to see a nutritionist or dietitian to help to work out a diet plan based on what they like to eat, at what time of the day they like to eat, and try to help with patient education really, because the doctor can't spend as much time with patient education about the diet, but the dietitian can. And persons have been to the, the dietitians and have had very good results from that. So you said they have had good results. So that means not just the lifestyle, but that m may mean some additional interventions may be warranted, more medical interventions. What are some of the treatments out there for, for acid reflux? All right. So uh, medication-wise, um, we know over-the-counter medication and acids. And acids really help to neutralize the acid in the stomach and they are just for treatment on the spot. They're not preventive medications. They're not going to prevent you from having acid reflux, but definitely you can have some relief. So we know things like Maalox and Mylanta, they, they have aluminum hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide over-the-counter, fine, easy. However, patients should be aware that they can't abuse these medications because some persons do end up having diarrhea from them or even excessive abdominal bloating. So we advise our patients, if the problem continues, you need to come to a doctor. Or we tell persons in general, we put the message out there. If you're getting something over the counter, you need to see a doctor. So when the doctor sees you now, they may take a step further with the medications. So they're medications that actually help to decrease the acid in the stomach, acid production. And um, one of them, which was very popular um, on our markets here in the Caribbean and overseas, um, would be um, North America, Europe, and so on, would be Zantac. But Zantac is no longer being used in our market um, locally. And therefore, we have replacements like famotidine, and that really helps with, with um, the acid production. If that doesn't work, we also have proton pump inhibitors. Some proton pump inhibitors are available over the counter, like Nexium, um, which is isomeprazole, and we also have omeprazole, um, and lansoprazole, pantoprazole. But generally, you'd find um, Nexium over the counter. Most patients don't like to stay on medication for an extended period. So is, is there any risk or should patients be taking this for an extended period and if they do have to take it for an extended period what are the risks the long-term risks of associated with that so um, definitely the medications that decrease acid production in the stomach shouldn't be taken for very prolonged periods of time because we do know the acid in the stomach is also protective it helps to protect from um, any harmful substance, bacteria, any harmful um, pathogens that get into our food that can cause disease in your body. So the acid production is so important with protection. And um, the, also the side effects of um, the proton pump inhibitors, for example, they can cause increased risk of um, osteoporosis where your bones become thin and also um, heart disease. We know for sure that patients who are on proton pump inhibitors really shouldn't be on prolonged um, use because of these risks. And um, some of the common ones, even omeprazole, which we know our population consumes a lot, and you know you can just go to the pharmacy and get omeprazole, is really one of the, le the least um, or the lowest choice of medications for patients with heart disease. At the outset, you mentioned that acid reflux is not a disease, but uh, an outcome <laughs> of many things. But when it comes to diagnosing, what, what do we do here in Antigua to diagnose, not necessarily just, since it's not a disease, acid reflux, but any of the complications that may have 
emerged from the long-term acid reflux. Yes. Okay, so um, we do our interview, of course, our medical interview with the patient, and we look for key um, symptoms which may guide us to which steps we need to follow after, what type of tests we would have um, the patient do. So, for example, if a patient um, during the medical interview complains about vomiting all the time, uh, or the acid reflux is so bad that they're not getting relief with the medications, or if they're vomit, sorry, not vomiting, um, having weight loss, then those are key signs that we have to look for something sinister, something serious, something that can be, you know, a real threat to their health besides just the acid reflux. So in those cases, um, we would want to do, for example, blood tests or stool tests to look for Helicobacter pylori infection. And we know Helicobacter pylori infection can be transmitted in um, simple things like salads, you know, anything that's not washed properly from the soil, any contaminated food from a food handler, um, anything raw, most likely, um, so, and, and drinking water. So we have the patients do those tests, and we do find that a significant number of patients with acid reflux symptoms can have that infection. And, and just to clarify that infection, we refer to as H. pylori. H. pylori. Most of our viewers would know it as H. pylori, H. Correct? pylori, yes. Okay. Yes. And we treat with antibiotics. And we also treat with um, proton pump inhibitors, which would help to decrease the acid production during that time. We generally don't let our patients stay on it for months and months. There's a specific, a fixed period that we put our patient on these medications. And then um, we may take it, take it a step further to do imaging studies. So we can have a patient do a barium swallow where they swallow the contrast and it goes down the esophagus from the mouth down the esophagus that takes the food and the liquid to your stomach. And it basically outlines that esophagus to see if there's any narrowing or mm -hmm. stricture of the esophagus. We also want to see if there's any dilation, if it's bigger than what it, the size it should be. And then going into the stomach, that contrast would light up the stomach and we can tell if there's any hiatal hernia. A lot of patients have hiatal hernias, yes, and that where the stomach bulges into the esophagus and that food ends up coming back up and that contributes to acid reflux as well. And also we can look in at the, the lining, the outline of the stomach, I should say, to see if there are any irregularities, anything looking like a mass or a filling defect that can be an ulcer. So those are the imaging studies that we do at first radiologically with x-rays. And then some patients really don't want to have x-rays done. They say, I don't want any radiation. Right. So we go straight to doing an upper gastrointestinal endoscopy where that tube with a camera is inserted into the mouth, down the throat, into the esophagus and into the stomach. And also the first part of the small intestine. So doing that, we can actually see pictures. It's a, like a live view of what the structures, the upper digestive structures look like. And the advantage to that as well is that we can have um, a biopsy done during that procedure to see if there's any sort of malignancy or any cancer that I was can be starting. I going to go there. You mentioned early on something more sinister. How, how do you relate acid reflux with cancer? Okay, so in terms of cancer, there can be different types of cancer, esophageal cancer, and there can be stomach cancer as well, and of course, um, duodenal cancer that we don't see very often. So the esophageal cancer actually can arise from untreated acid reflux or GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, where that acid comes from the stomach back up into the esophagus for a prolonged period of time. And therefore the cells in the esophagus actually start transforming because that acid is like an insult. And it's not just acid, of course, bile salts as well, because we know that bile does flow a little bit, a little bit does flow backward into the stomach and all of that content, the bile salts and the acid can basically wear down the lining of the esophagus and insult those cells and they start becoming precancerous. So the precancerous um, esophagus is referred to as Barrett's esophagus. And we can see those changes when an endoscopy is done. And a biopsy is done once we see any lesion, anything that looks suspicious, 
or anything that um, just looks different to everything around it. So that's a very, um, a very good benefit, a highlighted benefit of having an endoscopy done. It may be expensive, but it's worth it. And then of course, the stomach cancers, we know that um, patients can have um, just having stomach pain or they're having weight loss, they're having recurrent vomiting, they're vomiting all the time, they're just not digesting their food well. And we have to think about, is there mass in the stomach? Is there some sort of cancer that's causing a, like a blockage or causing the patient to be too full, feeling too full for a prolonged period of time? And not to get our viewers you know, excited yes. to say, oh, if I have acid reflux, I may have cancer. That's mm -hmm. not the point. What you're trying to get across to them is, if you're having these symptoms, get it checked. Absolutely. Forthwith. But because it's a part of our lifestyle, we need to make those modifications. But what are some of the, the treatments then? I know we spoke about medications, but again, not necessarily wanting to be on medication for an extended period. What are some of the other treatments or things that persons can do immediately if they feel they may, and their, their doctor has told them, yes, you do suffer from acid reflux, to start making these changes? Okay, so um, the lifestyle changes, I always start with that. Yes. <laughs> um, so the patient would have to stop drinking alcohol, definitely. Um, some patients don't like to hear that because it may be a part of their social life to hang out with friends and so on. But we know for sure the alcohol does cause acid reflux, it causes that increased um, acid production and reflux. And um, the smoking as well, the patient's advice to, dis to discontinue smoking. Um, in terms of um, the time that they eat, it's better to eat at least three hours um, before you lie down. Whether it's in the daytime you're going to have a nap or if it's bedtime, you're, you're actually going to sleep at night. Um, we ask the patients also to elevate the head of the bed. So sleeping propped up on 10 pillows is not ideal because, you know, you fall off during the night, during your sleep, you roll to the left or the right, and that's not definitive. So we actually ask the patient to elevate the head of the bed by six to eight inches. Either the mattress, if it can, the bed can elevate, or if they can, if they have a regular straight bed, to put blocks under the head, the head of the bed. Okay, and that will definitely help to with gravity to prevent those reflux symptoms. Now, in terms of um, any alternative treatment, um, patients do consume herbal remedies mm. that can help. Um, chamomile is known um, to help with bloating. It also helps with any muscle spasms in the gastrointestinal tract. So patients tend to have some relief. They feel as if their food is digesting better after they consume chamomile tea. Um, ginger as well is known. Um, we just advise our patients not to drink too much ginger, not to be, not for it to be very concentrated because that in itself can irritate the stomach lining. But if you have mild, mildly infused ginger tea, it can actually help with the inflammation going on in the stomach as well as the bloating and gassiness. Because this has such a major impact on a person's life and their lifestyle, have you found that it's having any mental health effects on, on your patients. Uh, we know we are hearing more and more the things that are impacting uh, an individual's mental health, but this specific one, acid reflux, indigestion, GERD, and the like, are, are you finding that to be a, a problem? Yes, definitely, because patients um, have to make changes in their lifestyle. Um, they may have to omit foods that they enjoyed eating before. Um, you know, like pizza, any tomato-based food. Some people don't want to give up ketchup because, it, you know, it's something they enjoy and they think makes their food taste better. Um, you may have to eat healthier on a whole and, you know, it's a bit more costly to consume foods that are healthier. It's, it's, um, it's easier actually to drink water, for example, but some persons may prefer to drink soda or a carbonated beverage. So having to get away from the, the things that they're usually consuming may be impacting on a patient. You know, they say, I have to stop eating all the things I like to eat. And then there's also, of course, you mentioned the cost. Um, you know, with, with healthier options for food, patients do complain about the cost. Um, but we do encourage them. It is better for you in the long term because we do know for sure that um, you don't want to have all of that acid coming up into your chest, into your esophagus to cause any damage in the long term. You know, it's interesting. I started off by saying, yes, acid reflux is not 
like the hypertension and the diabetes, but interestingly enough, they're all impacted the same, lifestyle, how we live our lives and how society has changed over the years has had such a, a detrimental impact on our overall health. That's true. Thank you very much for, for speaking with us on this topic, Dr. DeCastro. Any final words that you would want to our viewers to take away okay, from yes. this specific topic? Okay, yeah, so acid reflux, um, like we mentioned, it's a manifestation of symptoms, of, sorry, of any underlying problem, for example. It's not something that you should be afraid of. If you see that you're um, having some treatment over the counter or even something your doctor prescribed and you're not getting better, pursue it. Don't, um, don't sit back, don't wait and see if you get better, but at the same time, don't be afraid. Okay, and the key things that we look for as doctors um, that we would like our patients to be aware of. If you're having recurrent vomiting, you're vomiting over and over. If you're having any weight loss, if you find that um, your appetite is going and it's not the same as before and you're having reflux symptoms, then you pursue it with your doctor. Um, it's beneficial to find out what works best for you. There are a multitude of medications on the market and the doctor definitely can find something that will work for you. And it would be remiss of me if I didn't bring this up. You know, many times when persons may have a, a, an MI or heart attack or any cardiac related incidents, you may hear, oh, they had indigestion or they felt like they had indigestion or they may have some arm discomfort or pain. How do our viewers, what would you tell your, our viewers, if you would, about the two? The, if, if they were having indigestion and ignoring it, but it could be a, a cardiac related incident, are there specific signs that they should be looking for? Yes, we know you need to immediately <laughs> get to a, a doctor, but what are some key differences that they may want to, to look for? Okay, so if they're having persistent pain, um, it could be burning pain. Of course, we know a patient with a heart attack can have a burning pain. So if it's persistent for 30 minutes or more, if you find your heart rate is going up, your heart is speeding, um, if you find you're having shortness of breath with it, difficulty breathing, you're sweating a lot, if you're walking, you just get up and move around your room or you go to the refrigerator to drink water and you're feeling the pain get worse or any of those symptoms get worse, then we have to think about a cardiac related problem. And also our patients um, need to think about their own background history. If they have a history of hypertension or diabetes or high cholesterol, it definitely increases your risk for a heart attack. So with all of those symptoms added on, you must think about going to the doctor rather than staying home and waiting. Or, and or having a cup of ginger tea. Or having a cup of ginger tea. <laughs> Absolutely. But thank you very much for that. Okay, thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching Healthy Perspectives. While occasional acid reflux may be normal, frequent or severe acid reflux can indicate a chronic condition that, if left untreated, can lead to more serious complications even cancer. It is important to understand and remember that managing acid reflux is a multifaceted approach that may require medical treatment combined with lifestyle changes. So if you're dealing with acid reflux or think you may have these conditions, talk to your healthcare provider to determine the best course of action for you to take based on your individual needs. Take care of yourselves. We thank you for spending some time with us and for allowing us to share healthy perspectives with you. Be well, Antigua and Barbuda, and may your perspective always be a healthy one.